Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 15, Thoughts. This episode is called Space Time, another episode I love. Possibly my second favorite after the one where uh, Simmons is on the other planet the entire time. Uh, this video will have spoilers for everything MCU up, leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. So, let's dive right in. So yeah, we open on the the business owner telling, you know, Charles the, you know, he's he's trying to get him to go to the to to a shelter instead and i was wondering if they were going to get into cuz there is like there are some issues with shelters as wonderful as it would be if if they did solve all the problems that's not c quite the the case but no you know ultimately they don't come right out and say it but I figure it's because Charles is worried that someone there would come into direct physical contact with him, which, you know, triggers the, the visions. And, yeah, I love the hook of this episode. So we see, you know, Charles accidentally touches Edwin. The, the yeah, and... Edwin says, "I need Daisy Johnson." You know, on the on the nine one one call, and yeah, you know, at at first, we the audience don't really know what's going on, and it's one of those great mysteries where once you have by the end of the episode, you have all the answers. It doesn't take away from, you know, and and it doesn't. It's not the kind of thing where, like. I've only watched this episode once, but if I tried watching it again, I'm sure that everything would hold up to scrutiny. And... Yeah. Hydra attack from the air and take out Edwin and capture Charles. And Daisy does manage to touch him and gets a vision. And yeah, they basically spend the rest of the episode trying to prevent it from coming through. Let's see, and and ultimately they're not able to prevent it from coming true, but Charles is able to save Daisy. And yeah, so the body of Grant Ward is now dressed like Neo in Matrix Revolutions, and the way he talks it's not quite like agent but there's definitely some like it's it's distinct and and different in a way so yeah i i i feel like somebody who was working on the show just rewatched the matrix trilogy or something and then we have the um Yeah, um, you know, he, Hellbeast asks, uh, you know, Gideon, you know, what is it that you want? You know, why is what you have not enough? And, yeah, I like the thing about, you know, it's like, the, the, um, you know, okay, so I just gotta ask, are we sure this is possible? And everyone's like, yeah, it's possible. And May's like, that was a stupid question. <laughs> and he's like, okay, so we agree it's possible. You know, I feel like that was that was the writer's room just transcribing the conversation that happened there. Because, like, come on, we gotta, we want to get to to them trying to prevent. You know, the it's not as much fun to wonder. You know, could we? You know. In real life, maybe, but in this piece of fiction, is it possible to see the future? Sure, it is. Just let's get to the part where we're trying to trying to piece together. How does it happen? What can we do to prevent it? You know, that's the fun part. 
And honestly, this episode felt a lot like there was that show, I, th I think it was called Early Edition or something, you know. The, there's a little bit of information about something that will happen and the, the protagonist tries to, to change, you know. So, yeah. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Early Edition. Love it. And, yeah, I, I quite like... At first, I wasn't sure Fitz's... You know, I was like, why is he grabbing a, a pile of, of, you know, printer paper? What is that? You know, but... No, it, he actually did a really good job expressing, you know... If Yeah, because time is the fourth dimension... We perceive things in three dimensions, so if we were in two dimensions, time would be the third dimension, and here's what the third dimension, here's how it, you know, yeah, very, very nicely done. And, yeah, so they talk about, okay, so in order to prevent this, Daisy has to stay on the base, Coulson never brings out a gun, Fitzsimmons stay clear of snow, which I guess means that they cannot be watching any Hunger Games, which is really their loss. At least for the first four, I don't know about the prequel yet, I'm watching it tomorrow. And then we have the... Yeah, um... I think... Yes, um, so yeah. Phil is like, you know, gotta admit, this time stuff's always been a little over my head. Like, in Terminator, if John Connor's alive and able to send his friend back in time to save his mom to make sure he's born, doesn't that mean he doesn't have to? And Lincoln's like, I, um, I never saw the original Terminator. And Phil just says, you're off the team. Which, yeah, uh, that's, that would be my decision as well, which is why I don't get to pick the team anymore. That, that is the first and only question. Has everyone on the team watched the original Terminator? Okay, the door's right there. And, um, yeah, and, you know, May insists that they not, you know, not use all the servers, that the ones looking for Andrew remain unchanged. Murphy, it's you! And, yeah, you know, he realized he would have to stop all physical contact and he still wasn't able to or yeah and he wasn't able to make a difference in the lives of any of the ones and then we get the detail that you know he left because he knew he would never be able to hold his daughter again which just tears your heart out and stomps on it um i really appreciate that this episode you know, I wasn't hugely surprised, but it was still good to see, has empathy for the unhoused. You know, Charles is not this dangerous, you know, awful person, which, you know, conservatives would have you believe. No, he, you know, he, he absolutely does not deserve this. And... Yeah, so Gideon goes there and he's like, okay, so so you're working on this thing? Well, I'll buy it. And he's like, you want to you wanna buy our, you know, monocle popping out? You want to buy our patent? And he's like, no, I'm going to buy the company. <laughs> Which just, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, you know, the, the um, Charles is told, you know, show him and... At first I thought that meant show him what will happen, but apparently it meant show him the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, I am aware he did... The full line is show him what will happen, anyway. and the, But but yeah, very cool effect as he... And, and I appreciate... You know, at first when, when it... You know, I, no, no, you didn't understand. I said show him what will... You know, this is what will happen. And, you know, he holds out his hands and, and does the thing. At first I thought, oh, we're, I guess we're just not going to get to see, which, you know, fair enough, we did just see in the vision. But we do get to see the, the you know, corpses afterwards. And, 
yeah, you know, the, the, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on the, uh, um, yes, yeah, um, Hellbeast tells him, you know, okay, so, put it on, you know, if you, if you put on this suit, it will empower you to be a major character in a Neil Blomkamp film. And, yeah, Andrew gives himself up. It can get weirder. And, yeah, he points out, you know, the, the IV is a Hail Mary. And, yeah, ultimately, it, it at least didn't work on him, which does, you know, doesn't for sure mean it won't work for anybody else. And... Yeah, yeah, the, you know, talk, they, they talk about, you know, maybe you're fighting for some cause that we just don't understand yet. And, yeah, um, really, yeah, yeah, we have the thing, you know, I'm afraid that's someone else, you know, or something else, I think he said. And we have the long take fight. Really love these. I'm I'm glad this is at least the second one we've got. And just they're they're so much fun. And it was really cool earlier in the episode when they're going over. You know when May is trying to get fast enough to to you know do yeah. And let's see yeah, really great fight between Gideon and Daisy. Or fight. I guess it's really more of a beat down. But very tense as he, you know, it really does look like he is going to just beat her to death. And yeah, Charles finally made a difference. I don't want to ruin the moment, but there was a guy next to him. We didn't really see what happened to... Because Daisy didn't manage to take that guy out. I guess it's possible Charles touched the other guy and that knocked him out for long enough that he could get to, to Gideon. But yeah, I know, and he asks, you know, I, someone's going to need to protect my daughter, maybe you could, you know. And Daisy looks, you know, ma makes eye contact and, and from speaks from the heart, not on your life, which is about to end. And yeah, turns out it wasn't snow, so they're... Yeah, that was a, a nice video. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is where we hold hands. And, yeah, and, you know, we also saw Lincoln with his, his bloodied face, which, you know, yeah, Hellbeast doesn't want to kill inhumans. He wants to rule them. He wants to use them. And we get vision of this this thing in, in orbit of, of the Earth, and... Yeah, very, very mysterious. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before, but I'm not sure if it's in a TV spot in an earlier episode. And, yeah, the post credit scene, you know, for the first time, Gideon is afraid. And, yes, so some... Uh, I'm to be trivia for this episode. Yeah, this features the second one-shot fight sequence on the show. Both were performed by Chloe Bennett without a stunt double and were directed by Kevin Ch Chancharoen. The name Charles Hinton is a reference to British mathematician Charles Howard Hinton. He was known for his theory on the fourth dimension and also coined the term Tesseract for the four-dimensional analog of the cube. The character Rowan Hamilton is presumably named after Irish mathematician William Rowan Hamilton, who is responsible for many breakthroughs in science and mathematics. In pure mathematics, he is best known as the inventor of quaternions, which is, of course, when you tie four onions together. And the character Edwin Abbott is named after the 19th century teacher and theologian Edwin A. Abbott, who wrote the book Flatland, which uses a similar metaphor to explain the mathematical theory of time and space that Fitz uses as an explanation for the team. Let's see. And... Um, 
yeah. Um, that is it for the... Right, and yeah, it was also very... I, I quite appreciated that, yeah, Phil didn't shoot Daisy, he shot a two-way mirror, so it kind of looked like he was shooting, you know, the... Yeah, that was... And, and it's this thing of, you know... It is good that that did happen, or she would have been killed by the, you know, the guy with the submachine gun right behind the, the glass. So, yeah. And I think that is it. So, yes, I should be able to do an episode of this tomorrow. And, yeah, I will close with the exchange between Simmons and May. Do you think we can do it? Change the future. Every move we make changes the future. The real feat would be changing the past.